Hello everyone. Today in this video, in this video we'll be discussing the third module of chemistry, super important questions. And uh, don't miss any of these questions. These are the most repeated ones. And before starting, please like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is what is corrosion? Okay. And explain the electrochemical theory of corrosion. Okay. What is corrosion? Corrosion is nothing but the reaction of a metal on uh, with its surroundings. Okay. So when a uh, metal reacts with its surroundings. Uh, some corrosion happens okay means it the metal deteriorates okay the properties of the metal become lower and weaker okay because of chemical reactions between it and the surrounding environments like rusting of iron okay so it is a reverse process of extraction of metals okay electrical uh, electrochemical theory of corrosion it is valid only for wet corrosion okay in wet corrosion what happens when a metal is exposed to environment in presence of moisture corrosion takes place this is known as wet corrosion according to the theory uh, the metal occurs due to the formation of tiny galvanic cells anodic region and cathodic region over all the metal uh, substance so some reactions happen let's have a look what are those reactions firstly anodic reaction the iron fe it becomes iron plus uh, two electrons okay so electrons Electrons get separated from ion, so uh, only the um, ion will be remaining. In the cathodic, also the same thing happens. Hydrogen evolution type. Then what happens? The hydrogen comes from the moisture and it reacts with the uh, electrons to become H2. So once it becomes H2, after that uh, it uh, takes the moisture, the water, oxygen from the air, and it becomes H2O. And uh, when it uh, undergoes another uh, with Two electrons again with H2O, it becomes H2 plus 2OH minus. Now 2OH minus and Fe it reacts and uh, becomes 2. It becomes FeOH2. Okay, so this is the final uh, thing which is the formula formula for the rust. Okay, so in this way the metal gets corroded. Okay, so this is the uh, final. Um, Equation you write Fe plus F2 plus plus 2OH minus equal to FeOH2. Okay, this is the corrosion. Next is define ion selective electrode and explain the determination of pH of a solution using glass electrode. So what is ion selective electrode? In ion selective electrode, there will be an electrode and it will be working only based on a selective ion. Okay, it will not work for all ions, only for some selected ions it will be working. Okay, so the ion selective uh, electrode means the electrode which selectively responds for a specific ions in the mixture and potential of that electrode is fusion of those ions in the solution. That is called as ion selective electrodes. The electrodes which work only with specific ions is called ion selective electrodes. Okay. So what is glass electrodes? Glass electrode is an ion selective uh, electrode which is sensitive to hydrogen ions. Okay. So it is used to determine pH of a solution which is based on the concentration of H plus ions. So this is the diagram you need to make the wires to pH meter and AG AgCl will be present here in both the anode and cathode. 0 0.1 molarity of HCl will be present here. This is the filling part and KCl solution will be present here. Okay, and this is thin uh, glass membrane, thin pH glass membrane. Okay, so this is the representation of the glass electrode Ag AgCl HCl glass and analyte solution. Working will be as follows: and glass electrode is dipped in an analytic solution. Glass membrane is dipped in analytic solution. A potential develops across the membrane. A potential will develop positive and negative. Okay. As the glass bell filled with HCl known concentration, pH inside the bell is constant. pH will be constant here. When glass electrode is dipped in a solution of unknown pH, it can be represented as follows. Okay. So we know uh, the pH of a known solution and then the same mem same glass membrane will be dipped in an unknown solution and then we'll be able to calculate what will be the pH value. Okay, so this is the reaction which will be happening H plus solution plus glass membrane is equal to M plus solution and H glass membrane. Okay, so the exchange of ions happens from the positive to the negative. So the glass it corresponds with the H plus and M becomes a solution here. Okay, so it, ri it gives rise to a potential Eb. Okay. So based on the potential that is E1 minus E2, our electricity will be passed in between. So if you apply the Nernst equation into that uh, potential difference, we'll be able to uh, find out the value of uh, the x pH, which is the pH value of the unknown solution. Okay. So these are the things you need to write for the uh, given question. Next is what is reference electrode explain the construction working and applications of calomel electrode reference electrode means what 
electrode uh, the reversible electrode known as electrode potential which is used to determine the electrode potential of other electrodes is called as a reference electrode so uh, the, if this is the reference electrode and this is the unknown electrode we can use this electrode to find out the potential of this electrode why because we know about this one and if we react with this one we will be able to get an answer and based on that answer we know these properties so we can find out the unknown property okay like that that is the calomel electrode is an example of it the secondary reference electrode here pt will be there platinum kcl the sodium chloride solution hg hgcl2 and hg mercury will be present here okay so the working is as follows it is a reversible electrode okay so it functions as anode as well as cathode only one is there so it will function as well as uh, as anode as well as cathode depending on the nature of coupled electrodes of the cell based on the electrodes it will be reacting so when it acts as anode this is the reaction 2 hg plus 2 cl is equal to hg2 cl2 plus 2 electrons when it acts as a cathode this reverse thing you will be writing here okay that's all Applications include it's in the measurement of the single electrode potential, potentiometric determination of the electrode potential of zinc and copper electrodes. Okay. We go to the next super important which is define anodizing and explain the process of anodizing of aluminum and its applications. Suppose that you went outside and put aluminum in sun and some water you sprinkled. What happens after some time is it will become rusty. Okay. To make sure that uh, we do not get rust on the material, we will be anodizing it. Anodizing means it will be forming a layer on it so that the rust uh, or the corrosion will not happen. That is called as anodizing. Okay. It is a method of increasing the corrosion resistance. Corrosion corrosion resistance resistance means corrosion should not happen increasing the chances that corrosion should not happen of the metal part by forming a protective layer of oxide on its surface an oxide layer is formed on the metal so that corrosion will not happen that is called as anodizing so we can anodize using the aluminium uh, electrodes okay so Aluminum articles are to be anodized, it decreased, thoroughly washed, dried, and subjected to anodizing. Okay, now the construction is as follows. You can see here there are two uh, things anode and cathode, and power is applied in between, and oxygen is present here. And CrO3, this is the uh, analyte solution for this one, and this is Al203. Oh, okay, so this is the construction you need to make, and uh, the working is as follows when uh, the current is passed when dc power is passed the aluminium uh, electrons are uh, coming and depositing on the uh, metal okay in which the metal is suspended when the current is passed oxygen is liberated at the cathode and combines with the al to form the oxide film al plus oxygen it forms what alo3 and this will be uh, put it on the top of the uh, metal okay when this is on top of metal corrosion will not happen okay and how much thick we want that will be dependent on the changing oxidizing agent okay so when a current is passed this layer which you can see it is formed that is the protective layer okay and the width of it can be varied based on the concentration of the oxidizing agent if more oxidized agent concentration is there more uh, uh, it will be protective okay so it is used in aerospace automotive architecture and marine industry okay Moving on to the next supplement question, we have explained the theory instrumentation of potentiometric estimation and application. Okay, so what is instrumentation? Instrumentation is the following. Okay, this is the diagram you need to make. Reference electrode will be there, indicator electrode will be there. In instrumentation, two electrodes will be there, reference and indication. And there will be an analytic solution between power will be passed from here. RE plus RE salt bridge analyte and IE. Okay, RE and IE is the reference and indicator electrode. Now the theory is that in potentiometric titration, titration means means what there will be a liquid and will be uh, putting some other liquid and noting some values how much light it is again will be putting liquid and noting some values that is titration so here what happens the measurement of potential of a suitable indicator electrode with respect to the reference electrode functions as titrant volume it provides reliable data uh, from the titration that use chemical indicators and are useful when colored or turbid okay it can be classified as perception titrated for uh, titrations complex formation titrations neutralization titrations and redox uh, titrations so here what happens a potentiometric titration involves measuring and recording cell potential after each addition of titrant there will be addition of titrant and the potential will be measured again titration and again the measurement of the potential will be taken okay and time must be allowed for it to attain the equilibrium after each addition of reagent by continuous stirring okay and uh, applications include the determination of pka of weak acids application for redox reaction and precipitation titrations 
let's have a look at one of the numericals a cell is obtained by combining two cadmium electrodes okay two cadmium electrodes are there and a cell is obtained from that the solution is 0.1 molarity and 0.5 molarity two electrodes um, molarities are given here the solution molarity is at 298 kelvin give cell representation first thing second is reaction third is emf you have to calculate okay so let's have a look uh, how is that okay so this is the solution so first thing they have given the cathode 0.5 molarity which is of higher value and lower molarity is the anode okay after that n is 2 because the two uh, cathodes are there and uh, i mean the two cadmium uh, things are there and temperature is 290 kelvin cell representation cd cd2 plus which is 0.1 uh, molarity cd2 plus and cd which is 0.5 molarity this is cathode this is anode okay that is a cell representation cell reaction at anode what happens cd becomes cd2 plus and electrons are emitted and cathode electrons are combined with the cadmium uh, metal so that it becomes cadmium okay now finally calculation of emf okay the e cell uh, calculation will be 0.05 n divided by n n is 2 log of cathode by anode cathode is 2 0.5 anode is 0 0.1 when you divide this you will get log 5 multiplied with 0 0.05 and divided by 2 you will be getting 0 0.0206 watt that is the emf of the cell okay so these are the super important questions you need to understand them and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one